This is you. You just got put in the job of building a city from scratch, city skyline style. There are tons of things you need to think about right now. You have water, power, education, recreation, zoning, and transportation. You don't need to focus on the first four right now. Those are pretty easy to solve. You don't need to focus on zoning either because that's not your job. So now you just become a highway planner and you have a choice to make. Are you going to be the good guy, optimized for happiness of both citizens and tourists? Or get paid a bit more to be the bad guy and to optimize for inconvenience and anger? We're going to go over if you choose the good guy option and the bad guy option. Let's start off with the good guy option, how to not be a bad guy. First thing you must include, walkable downtowns. You shouldn't feel like you're getting run over by a car every time you use a crosswalk. While we're talking about cars, this is a totally not for segue onto parking. About parking, you should keep it to a minimum. The parking you do have, you should put it underground. If you do decide to put parking on the surface, you should keep it on the side streets and side streets only. And no, don't think that you can use parking decks to save yourself. Let's face it, parking decks are ugly. When used in large amounts, they can be a bit of an eyesore to a city. Don't use fancy parking decks unless you know the architect really knows what he's doing. And he probably doesn't know what he's doing, so just don't. Anyways, we're gonna look at Houston now. Why are we looking at Houston? Because it's a pretty bad city when it comes to car design. Heck, the downtown is divided by two different highways. 45 and 69. It should be common sense that you don't have to cross over or under a freeway to get to different parts of a downtown on foot. Houston, you can do better than this. Just look at another city that does highways way better than you. Amsterdam. Look how big of an area they have in the downtown with no freeways at all. And this is Houston's area in comparison. Yeah, there's not that much of a comparison here. What do you do if you do want to be the biggest nightmare of all citizens in your city? What if you want everyone to have maximum misery? Well, we're not going to look at Houston again for even more problems they have. We've already made fun of them enough. Instead, let's look at none other than Atlanta. Because of how Atlanta's highways are built, there's no one answer on how many highways are inside the beltway, but there's a lot. I'll just say five for the purpose of this video. A beltway is meant to be built to surround most of an area's population. Only 15% of the metro area lives inside the perimeter. The perimeter is so bad at doing its job that it's 40 miles away from some of the suburbs of Atlanta. It also doesn't help that literally every highway in the Atlanta area is built to go towards the perimeter in downtown. And there's not a single highway that goes around the city as a bypass in the outer suburbs. And Demon Mode U is loving this. This is what you want your city to be like. Oh, and while you're at it, don't forget to be as against pedestrians and public transport as possible. Then you could truly do your job. Oh, and when you do decide to build a beltway that circles most of the metro area's population, they'll just make everyone want to build their houses and businesses right around it, so that's not going to help you. And Little Demon U is still loving that idea. Uh-oh, I heard something. I don't think they like you. They want someone else to do the job of planning the city's highways. Heck, they might even be mad enough that they'll kill you French Revolution style. That's not good. They're just tired of the traffic that your system has created. They want the city to be modeled like some of the cities I'll list now. Augusta, Georgia. All the freeways avoid downtown, and they just serve the suburbs. If you do want to go to downtown, there's plenty of exits that can get you there. And traffic's not exactly a problem either. Heck, the worst traffic is in the outermost suburbs, so... I think that means that the system is doing the job correctly. And then there's Lexington. It's downtown and most of the inner suburbs are located inside of its beltway. Heck, the beltway doesn't even have a freeway connection to the interstates that run a bit further out in the city. And there aren't many traffic problems here either. Now let's look at a place that does have traffic problems. But I don't think it's the city's fault that it has traffic problems. This would be none other than San Francisco. There's only three freeways that even go inside the city, and two of them terminate before they even reach downtown. A third one goes on the edge of downtown and efficiently brings people that want to go to downtown. But why is there so much traffic here? Simply because there's not many ways to get in. There's only three, maybe four major ways to get in from the south, and only two to get in from the north or east. The only way to get in from the east is using the Bay Bridge, and the only way to get in from the north is on the Golden Gate Bridge. When options are that limited, there's sure to be traffic on the two main gateways to the city. And why are there not more freeways in San Francisco? You can thank the highway revolts for that. San Francisco was the center of highway revolts in the U.S. in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. Another city that does freeways right is Madison, Wisconsin. It has one sort of bypass that goes around the south side of town and then just turns into your regular old road in the westernmost suburbs. Otherwise, the remaining freeways either miss downtown entirely, 
or end before they reach downtown, which is what highways should do before they reach a downtown. And last but not least, it's Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's similar to Augusta. The mainline highway goes on one side of the city, and the bypass goes on the other side of the city, both missing downtown. But now we need to settle something. Which one is better? Who wins? Is it the evil highway planner or the good highway planner? Let me know in the comments below. Oh hey, you reached the end of the video. That's kind of surprising. Here's your call to subscribe. Oh, and you should watch this video too, because why not?